Good evening, everybody. It's Cutler here in the Let's Talk to Cutler broadcast, the Let's Talk to Cutler vlog. I'm chuckling because you all are already jumping in the chat before I can even get the words out of my mouth. And that's a good thing. It really, it, it, it makes me feel really exuberant, really excited, and just all of those things, just a floodgate of emotions. Thank you so much for joining me. It's already the 8th of March. The month is moving on, and so are we. I want to tell you what this channel is all about. My station is about inspiration. It's about motivation. It's about taking the time to see how I can show up a little bit better tomorrow than I did today. And it's making sure that I don't show up in that space called better all by myself. But we make the effort. We make the um the commitment and we are so intentional about making sure that when we show up in that space is called better we have someone to show up along with us so thank you all so much for showing up with me this evening i want to go ahead and shout out the lttc vips for just a moment but before i do let me invite you if you have not already subscribed do me a favor go ahead and subscribe to my channel what are you waiting for go ahead and subscribe can't you use a little more motivation a little more inspiration a little more push to become a little bit better, a little more better tomorrow than you were today. If you can use that, then just give me 1,800 seconds. You all know I'm only here for 1,800 seconds every Tuesday and Thursday, right? Unless you all push me to go to 1,900. But do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe. And once you subscribe, click on the notification bell because it will let you know whenever I've gone live and or whenever I have uploaded new content. And then after you join and you join me live in the chat, do me a favor and do a thumbs up on the conversation. Why, Cutler? Because it lets me know that you are encouraged by the conversation and lets YouTube know that you like what that guy is talking about. So uh, that's why. That's the answer to all of the whys. Now then, let me shout out the LTTC VIPs for the evening. They are the people who usually jump into the chat room first. Usually the first three people who jump into the chat room. And I'm chuckling because it looks like somebody really, really jumped in early. But hey, I'm glad you did, my good friend, uh, Rosella. Rosella says, good evening, all. Hope everyone had a good day. I'm ready for the ride. All aboard. Let's go. Why did she talk about riding? It is because we are riding down this highway riding down the highway of life. And I, I used to have this segment where we looked at the uh, this book here so that you all would know, Billboards to Better. So we had this segment about Billboards to Better and we would read the different billboards and the signs and those things. Well, the signs that we read came out of this book. That was my seventh book. It's over on Amazon. You can run over there and get it. And then Annie Cutler says, let's ride. And then Tracy Johnson says, hey, everyone, let's ride. Smiley face to all. I'm so glad to see all of you. So please take the time to come on over and join me. Join, join me in the chat. I want to say happy Women's History Month. I salute all, all of you uh, ladies. The world wouldn't be the world without you. In fact, there would be no world without you. So I don't have a hat on, but hey, if I did, hats off to you all. But Let's take the time, certainly, to as you're going through this month to to celebrate the accomplishments, the achievements, the the struggles to overcome that women have endured. So I certainly salute all of you. And I thank those of you who are, who are certainly joining me. And I was going to to put a plug in for women entrepreneurs as well. And I think uh, Thursday, I just may very well do that. So if you are a woman entrepreneur, then please take the time to send me an email. You can send the email to talk to the number two cutler at gmail.com. And I want to celebrate and highlight you. That's that's just one of the things that I would really like to do here. So if you are a woman entrepreneur, I want to celebrate and do a shout out to you this coming Thursday. So take the time to send me an email, drop an email to me at talk to the number two cutler at gmail.com. And if you are one of my subscribers and you follow me, I'm certainly going to shout you out Thursday. So 
go go ahead and do that. All right. What have we what have we been talking about? We've been talking about how to handle life at its most intense moments. So speaking of becoming better, speaking of showing up and trying to be a little more, a little bit better tomorrow than I was today. We've been reading this book right here. We've been reading When I Am Overwhelmed, How to Handle Life at Its Most Intense Moments. And my goodness, have we talked about some intense moments and we will continue to do that. And I find that there's certainly some gentle guidance in the book, some uh, a space for us all to reflect and say, you know what? That's very helpful to me. And even if I am not overwhelmed, I know someone who is. And if I'm not overwhelmed today, I may be overwhelmed tomorrow. If I'm not overwhelmed today, I have been. So it's a matter of all of us being accountable and responsible for helping each other in this space and this journey that's called life. That's why we're riding down the highway of life. If you want this book, run on over to amazon.com and get it and search for Gregory Cutler, Gregory Brad Cutler. It's over there. You can get it. You don't need us to join the conversation. It helps. And there's also some space in there for you to, to, to write and, and do all that kind of stuff. And this is not about pushing the book, but this is about us taking the time to see how do we handle life at its most intense moments. We've talked about a number of practical measures and methods and things that we can use. Thank you, Tracy, for the compliment. Um, but I want to share this as we go into chapter eight. Chapter eight talks about counting the days. And it's really about using your time wisely. I don't know about you, but I have not always used my time wisely. If I can just come out the gate and be transparent, I haven't always used my time wisely. And I come from the country in the South and we had all of these sayings about time. Do me a favor. If you're chatting with me, Tell me some of the things that you have heard about time, some of the sayings that you have heard about time. And I'll just flash some of those on the screen while we're all chatting and while we're here talking. But we're going to talk about time. That's why chapter eight is about the, the subject. The title of chapter eight says, count the days, count the days. You know, we, we, we're often told, don't waste time. My mother used to tell us, don't, don't lose track of time. Um, don't let time slip by. Uh, let's see. You use your time wisely. So that's that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. So you all let me know some of the sayings that you have heard about time. All right. T. Cutler says. Time waits for no man. Time waits for no man. Thank you for that. Because it does not. Time marches on. And then let's see. Tracy Johnson says. Don't waste time worrying. That's a very good one. Don't waste time worrying because if you waste your time worrying, you can't get that time back. Let's see. Linda Martin. Nobody's promised tomorrow. Yes. Speak, speaking of time and time segments, nobody is promised tomorrow. That is absolutely true. That is why, that is why we have to be our best today, you all. Thank you, Linda. That's why we, that's why we show up our best selves. Every time you show up, show up as your best self in that moment. So you, you live as if this is your best moment. Live it as, as if it is your best moment. Okay, let's see. Time waits for no, absolutely, la la. Time waits. By the way, he says, every, every, uh, hey, everyone. But you're right. Time waits for no man or no woman. It does not wait. Time is the thing that's going to keep ticking. It's going to move along. It's not waiting for anybody. Time is like a moving locomotive. It's like a moving bus. It's like, it's, Inertia is when something already has its movement in place and it's not going to stop. So some things build inertia and they just keep on going. It doesn't stop. And time does not wait for anybody. Time does not wait for you to get it right. Time does not wait for you to get it all together. And so time just keeps on marching. It doesn't wait for anybody. In fact, time doesn't catch up with you. You have to catch up with time. Thank you, Lala, for that one. Thank you so much for that one. What else have you all heard? Let's, let's see. MV, you're right. Another one we've heard. Time is valuable. Time is one of the most valuable commodities that we have ever been afforded. And I think we understate, we underrate, and we, we undervalue time, but time is valuable. So you have to you use it wisely. All right. And then, yes, Tracy, that's another. Use your time wisely. 
Don't you don't don't use your time involved in what I would call frivolity, frivolous or foolish things. Don't 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 use your time doing foolish things. All right. And then I like this. Sonia Bailey, you know, I absolutely love this one. Thank you so much, my friend. Put your time in. Payday is coming after a while. And we can give that so many applications in terms of what in terms of what we do, let's say within your profession, in terms of so it means to put your time in because payday. So so work payday is coming. Well, let's put that on a broader scale because I'm faith based. You all know where I'm going with it. Do right. Use your time wisely because what you do with your time, there's a reward that's coming for how you use your time. There's a space, a period of recompense that's coming based on how you use your time. So for those of us who are faith-based, it is about saying, you know what, do right with the time that you have so you can reap a reward for having done right. Put your time in. Payday is coming after a while. We used to say another, and I, I, and I put up some of these others, work while it's day. Because when, when night comes, no, no man, or thank you, Lala, no man or woman can work. So we've got to use our time wisely. Time has a way of showing, let's see, what is that one? Time has a way of showing us what really matters. And we can't keep anyone. So in, we can't keep anyone or anything. So enjoy them while we can. Absolutely. You know, I think about the number of times any of us have been to the grave. And the, the, there is no way that we can hold on to the one that we're bidding farewell. So we have to enjoy them and love them while we can and let them know that we love them. All right, Lala, thank you so much for that one. Time is, speaking of MV, as you just said, time is valuable. T. Cutler, you're right, time is money. Sometimes, and we have to tell people, don't fool with my time because when you fool with my time, you're fooling with my money, all right? So we have to make sure that we're, that we're careful about that. I love this. You all are talking to me tonight. I absolutely love this. Let's see what else do y'all have to say. There is a time. There is a time for everything under the sun. I love that one, Linda Martin. There's a there's a time and a season for everything that's under the sun. So it means that you can't do everything always. That that there are seasons that that are set aside and 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 that are earmarked for certain things in in our lives, and we have to be careful about that. So there's a time for everything, a time and a season for everything under the sun. Everything has its given time, its given season, its given space, and we have to be aware of that. Sometimes life seems to be very cyclical because it seems to go around in circles and in cycles, and we have to be careful about that. We have we have to watch the times, just like the winter, spring, summer, and fall. We have seasons in our lives. We have seasons in our lives, and we have to be cognizant and conscientious about how we are going to do what we do during those seasons. Just have to have to be careful and wise about it. Let's see, it's not always about the quantity, but the quality of time that matters. That is that is so true. I often say when it comes to how we live our lives, it doesn't matter the brevity or the longevity of life, because sometimes life is brief. And sometimes it's long. So it does not matter the brevity or the longevity of life. But what matters is what you do with it while you have it. So it's not always the quantity, the number of years, because there are some 90 year olds who have lost, who have wasted time. There are some 70, 60 and 80 year olds who have wasted time. But the converse of that is also true. There's some four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 year olds who have managed to capitalize and, the ma and maximize on the time that they've been given. And then again, let's see. Absolutely. There's a time and a place for everything, a time and a place for everything to laugh, to cry, to live, to die, to dance and all of those things. Time and a place for everything. Let's see. Oh, let's see. All right. Th Lala, you're absolutely right. Let me just share that comment. Lala says, yes, this is so needed because life gets so busy and it feels like time slips away. Lala says, thank you all. And I thank you all as well for these reminders. Let's make sure that we use time wisely. And as I reflect on time, I, I'm going to go right to chapter eight and share with you my perspective of time. So if you're reading along, you can you can turn in, in the books 
to chapter eight, and we'll keep on we'll keep up with this conversation about using time wisely. As I wrote, count the days. Here's what I wrote in the book. I've got more days behind me than I do ahead of me. I wrote that that is a truism that had never really struck a responsive chord with me until the year that I turned 50. When I lapsed into that magical moment of having lived half a century, I seemed to have remembered every funeral I had ever attended, every mistake that I had ever made, every promise that I had broken, every dream that I had not realized, mm. every dream that I had not realized, every goal that I had not fulfilled, every friend that I had failed, every person that I had misused, every opportunity that I had mishandled, every vow that I had not kept, every unscrupulous deed that I had done, every unkind word that I had uttered, every lie that I had told, every breath that I had taken for granted, every moment that I had wasted, and every time that I had been forgiven. We reach some monumental and pivotal points in life where we stop and we count the moments. We stop and we realize and we ask ourselves, we, we, we do introspection and we reflect and we say, have I used my time wisely? What have I done with my time? And years ago when I turned 50, I remember at that moment, I remember reflecting over my life. And I came to grips and I came to terms with the fact that I had not used every moment wisely. I had not done right. I had not done good by all of the time that I had. And that is why those of you who have been with me, you all know that I'm so transparent. And that's why I wrote it in that book, you all. For me, it was the realization that I hadn't done right with every, with the gift that I had been given. Couldn't go back and do it over, but it was acknowledging that I have to make wise use of my time. At half a century and, and at different pivotal points in your life, you realize, my goodness, I, I, I have to learn how to use time. I have to become a good steward over the most powerful and most valuable gift that has been given to me, and that is time. I literally counted the days that I had lived, survived, endured, and overcome. Sometimes when you, because we're talking about when I'm overwhelmed, sometimes when you are feeling overwhelmed, you've just got to count the days. You don't necessarily have to count what happened during the days, but just count the days. Add them up, and despite the trials, look at how many days you have survived. And that's what I want to offer us to offer to us tonight. My offering is the ability to count. Sometimes just add up the days because we, when we are in the throes of those challenging times and we sometimes cannot see the light of day, it helps. I promise you, it helps to be able to add up the days and count them. And despite the trials, you come to grips with how many come to grips with how many days you have survived, how many days you have endured, how many days you have been standing, how many days you have managed to navigate from the from, from when the sun came up until the sun went down. You managed to count those days. I just put it in the book just because it, it seemed to help me. At the age of 50, I had lived 18,262 days. Think about it. Based on your age, how many days have you lived? That was when I was 50, 18,262 days. I got excited about it only to realize it translated into 438, 288 hours that I had lived, that I had survived, that I had been here on this thing that's called earth. When you're feeling overwhelmed, ask yourself, how long have I made it? How long have I endured? How long have I overcome? How long have I carried the weight even when I said I couldn't carry it any further? Count the days. Because every day that you carry it, you are a victor and not a victim. 
I want to offer us a different perspective. That's all. Because so many of us have been carrying so many things. And while it seems or they seem to be weighing us down and we become overwhelmed by the weight of what we're carrying. But when you stop to realize, guess what? I'm carrying it. Guess what? I'm carrying it and I'm still here. I may have to take a reprieve every now and then. I might have to take a break, but I'm still here. Count the days. So when I say use your time wisely, take a moment to count it. And say, you know what? I'm stronger than I thought. Because, because guess what? I've, I've been able to wake up and go to sleep all of those days. I've been here for all of these hours and I'm still making it. And I'm still on this thing that's called the highway of life. And I'm each day I'm heading to a space on a place that's called better. Reaching, let me go back to this book because I get excited about that. The privilege of being able to look back over my life and say, you know what? I carried it. I carried it. I made it through. Whether I survived, whether I endured, whether I lasted, whether I persevered, whatever you want to call it, I made it. And I'm still forging forward. One of my friends says there are only two ways to go, forward and up. Tends to tell his folk that they are moving in two directions only forward and up. And so I want us to think about it because I know that we're carrying so many things. Some of us are carrying heartache, but we're carrying it. Some of us are carrying heartbreak, but we're carrying it. Some of us are carrying sickness and disease, but we're carrying it. And I'm not downplaying any of that because I know, I know from the emails that I get, from the text messages that I get, from some of you that I know personally, I know we're carrying so many things. And many times it feels like it is the weight of the world that's on our shoulders and we feel like I am the only one carrying it. But we're surviving. We're, we're making it. We're making it. And I want to encourage us to keep on making it. Keep on making it. I know over the course of these months and some of the few years that some of us have been together, we've dealt with sickness, disease, death, and all of these things. So you want to know why I smile when I see you show up? I smile because I know that you're still surviving. I know that you're still making it. And I'm not taking it for granted because I know every day, every day is not sunny and wonderful and all. I get that. But my place of rejoicing with and for you is that you're still able to count the days. For me, reaching the magical age of 50 brought me two gifts, a conscience and a soul. Yes, I had a conscience and a soul before turning 50, but somehow turning 50 seemed to renew my conscience, my sense, my intuitive nature of what's right and wrong. And it revived my soul, the essence of who I am, my will, my imagination, my emotion. It was all revived. For many years, I had been scarred, broken, battered, beaten, and overwhelmed. I'm just being transparent with you all tonight, as I always am. I'm telling you, 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 you want to see the transparent side of Cutler. Get this book here. Get this book. Because I say I was functioning in frustration. When you watch the hopes, dreams, and plans for your life take a 180 degree turn from the course that you set, you sometimes feel as though you are in a constant struggle of trying to steer an ocean liner that's heading for a gigantic iceberg. That's how you feel. Fortunately, I escaped the calamity of the iceberg only to wake up one morning to realize 
that God had carried me all of those years. He carried me in mercy. He carried me in forgiveness. He carried me in grace. He carried me while I carried all of the other stuff that weighed me down. Ah! <laughs> Ah, okay. You all know one, in one chapter of the book, I said you have to give your emotions a voice. So that's what that ah oh, was about. T. Cutler, I'm with you. I'm absolutely here with I smile because I'm still here. I smile because I'm still here. And I love it when you all check in on each other and, and you come into the chat and you want to know how, how each other is doing, how each other's functioning. I'm telling you, it's the truth. I was functioning in frustration having watched hopes and dreams and all that stuff seem to just go down the drain. But as I said, God carried me. He carried me while I carried all of the other stuff that weighed me down. He carried me when my heart was broken and my soul was wounded. He carried me when I dressed up the outside so that no one would challenge me when I would utter the religious platitude all is well. You know, when people say, how are you doing? And they would say, Cutler, how are, you, how, how are you doing? And so I was able to dress up the outside so that no one would challenge what was going on inside when I would give them this platitude, this trite, overused expression that says, all is well. And I get it. I understand. I understand the positive, the power of positive thinking. I understand the power of a powerful affirmation. I understand the power of speaking those things that are not as though they are. So I understand the power of saying all is well. I understand the power of declaring that all is well. But I also understand. I also understand the mask of saying all is well when you know that you don't feel it at that moment and you're wondering, may I be transparent and say that all is not well. So instead I'll just say all is well and I'll dress and look the part. All right. He carried me through 50 years of struggles, challenges, anguish, and tears. And not once, never did he get tired. This realization took my breath away. You all know when we first started talking about this book, I said that there's some things that would knock the wind out of you. Those bad things that would knock the wind out of you and overwhelm you. And then I said that there are some good things that would just take your breath away. Those great things that would overwhelm you. And I was overwhelmed at the fact that God never got tired of carrying me while I carried some of the stuff that I couldn't even carry, that I couldn't even handle. I'm going to keep reading. It did not take much introspection for me to come to the conclusion that I had not done right by all of the time. You all, and I'm not pushing the book just for the sake of it, but get it because I think we can identify with it. Chapter eight is one of my most transparent chapters. It did not take much introspection for me to come to the conclusion that I had not done right by all of the time, people, and opportunities that had been given to me hadn't done right. Like a treasured artifact that could not risk exposure to the elements, God had tucked me safely away in the secret place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty. That, that blew my mind. He had tucked me safely away because I was mishandling time, but he tucked me safely away. And trying to conceptualize the goodness that God had bestowed on me was more than I could bear. I had done absolutely nothing to deserve his goodness. He had blessed me and kept me and preserved me simply because he wanted to. I would... Those who know me remember when I turned 50, I wept for days as I realized that I was alive only because of grace. Only, <laughs> only because of grace. 
because at 50, I had buried either friends or cousins who didn't make it to 40, didn't make it to 30, and some barely made it into 20s. And there I was, having lived half a century. So whenever I hear the joyful refrain that says, I am redeemed, something resounds within my soul. You know, we often hear at scriptures, this at, at funerals, we often hear this, this, this scripture that says, teach us to count our days. That's really more of an admonition for the living, to count our days. For as much as my 50 years had brought me pain and sorrow, triumph and tragedy, victories and defeats, blessings and blissfulness, I had to some degree, I had learned from those 50 years and we need to all learn from our years, be they 20, be they 5, 10, 15, 20 or more. I had learned and we should all learn how to handle, maneuver, and navigate life. That is why we come together these Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're just talking about how to handle life at its most intense moments. I had developed what some would call wisdom because I had kept an account of my days. I had not merely let life happen without paying attention. Don't, if I can just sort of summarize a part of our conversation tonight, don't let life happen without paying attention. Don't let life happen without paying attention. Use your time wisely. Use your time wisely. I think what I want to do is, is just pause here because we've, you all have been sharing these wonderful thoughts about time. And, and I've been sharing from the book and giving us an opportunity to say, you know what? How can I avoid being overwhelmed at times? I got to remember to use my time wisely. How do I handle those most intense moments? So, use my time wisely and reflect on the fact that I'm still here, that I survived, I thrived, I endured, I made it. Don't let, don't let, thank you, Tracy, life pass you by. Don't, don't let it pass you by. I'm going to pick up, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up the next time we come together and I'm going to share this poem that I wrote when I turned 50. I'm also going to share another poem and I'll also shout out women entrepreneurs. I think, th I think that's what I want to do. But I am telling you this, I am telling you this, make sure, make very sure that you count the days so that in, in order to make sure that you don't become overwhelmed and sucked under and, 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 and taken into a downward spiral, what you want to make sure is that you count the days. And when it looks like you've been in the throes of challenges and hurdles for just 20 days, you say, all right, I've been here for 20 days in this. But apart from that, I've been on this thing called earth for over 18,000 days. My friend, Jay Song for you. It's good to see you. All right. Listen, I'm getting ready to go. You all have kept me here more than 1,800 seconds, but I tell you what I'll do. When we show up next go round Thursday, tell somebody, come on and let's talk to Cutler because I'm going to share two poems. I'm going to shout out women entrepreneurs, but I'm going to continue our conversation about time and about counting the days. Listen, let me say this. Let's keep building community. Let's keep maintaining connectivity. You all stay safe and stay sane. Keep your heads up. Keep your heads up. Keep your hopes up. And tell me, well, I'm not going to ask you to tell me anything because I was going to say something else. I'm not going to ask you to tell me anything. But please know this. From my heart to yours, there is and always will be so much love. Until the next time, let me just say good night and come on. Let's talk to Cutler. <laughs>